The other day I finished reading um, Doppler by Erland Lowe. This is a book I picked up from the library because judging by the cover, which is the Canadian publication of it, it just looked like a really Canadian book and I thought that a story about a man who befriends a moose might be really interesting to me. Somehow I missed the fact that it is not a Canadian book, it is a Norwegian book, um, but I was under the impression just by looking at it <laughs> that it must be Canadian given that it's red and white and has a moose on the cover. Um, I feel slightly like I was like clickbaited so to speak by this book. Um, the copy of it that I have, the library has blocked out the part where it said that it was from Norway and was translated into 20 different languages. Although I still kind of get the impression that they meant for it to sort of look Canadian so to speak. Um, but uh, I just thought I would talk a little bit about what I felt like when I read this book. Um, when I first started this book, I actually really liked it. I thought it was really funny and just like a fun read overall. Um, but closer to the end of the book, I kind of got bored of it and I didn't really enjoy it quite as much. It was a bit of a slog to get through closer to the end, honestly, even though I only had like maybe 50 pages left. It, it took me a long time to read because I just wasn't that invested, but at that point I had already gotten so far into it that I figured I might as well finish it. So, uh, this book is about a man who falls off his bike and gets a concussion. After he gets this concussion, his outlook on life changes drastically very fast. He realizes that he genuinely doesn't really like being around people all that much. Um, and that he finds this concept of niceness to be very irritating to him, which is something uh, I might want to explain a little bit more after. Um, but once he has this realization, he abandons his whole family and his life to just go live in a tent in the woods outside of town. And he's very hungry at one point at the beginning of the book and he kills a mother moose. And the baby moose starts following him around, and at first, kind of reluctantly, he befriends the moose. Um, and so, like I said, uh, when this book opened, like started, I found it really funny, and I was enjoying reading it quite a bit. Um, one line in particular I remember is from uh, just before he befriends the moose. Um, Doppler, the main character, is looking down at a high school, and he says... Um, the pupils usually stand on street corners, hanging about in a pathetic, ungangly way while smoking as much as they can before the school bell rings. If the calf could get a hold of cigarettes, it wouldn't think twice about starting to smoke. Which I just found really funny because I found the concept of a moose smoking a cigarette to be a really funny mental image. Um, it, it just made me laugh, to be honest. Just picturing a baby moose smoking a cigarette, like all angsty and upset the way that a teenager might. Um, and... It just, it really tickled my funny bone. And another part that I found really funny was uh, Doppler attends a PTA meeting that his daughter, like, desperately doesn't want him to go to. He decides to go anyways to, because his wife wanted him to go and because it would upset his daughter and she would be embarrassed. Um, so he, their class is planning their overnight trip to other cities, which I would imagine is something that's pretty normal in Europe. Um... Where they're going to go and travel and go to other sound towns and stuff. We don't really do that in Canada, given the fact that our towns are pretty far apart. It would be kind of impractical. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, he is the only person present who thinks that the students should be allowed to drink during this trip. And he's very adamant that he thinks that they should be allowed to drink. And this is something that is making the other parents quite uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, he's, his suggestion is that by preventing the children from drinking, they're sort of shielding them and coddling them in a way, and he thinks that they should be allowed to. Um, it, it might have been said in the book, I don't know how old these teenagers are, and I, I feel as if that might depend on how old they are, if they're like in, like, older teenagers, like 18, 19 years old. I mean, that's like the legal drinking age in Canada anyways, is like 18 or 19 years old, depending on where you are. Um, and like that to me seems uh, like a pretty reasonable assessment, but they are on like a school trip <laughs> that's sanctioned by the school. So maybe that's not such a good idea. But nonetheless, he goes on about this. And then um, the part of the agenda comes up that's called other business. And 
during this part of the PTA meeting that's supposed to be about other business related to the school curriculum, Doppler goes on a rant about how the barter system is the best economic system. And he sort of loosely relates this back to the fact that it's supposed to be about the students because he says it should be part of the curriculum, but he's really just going off about the, the advantages of the barter system. And I, to me, that was just really funny. <laughs> like the way it was presented, it was very dry and I, I, it made me laugh quite a bit. One of the things that I initially really liked about this book was the dislike that Doppler has for things that are like nice or like niceness um, or just sort of normality or almost banality. Like the things, the people just behaving in a way that's very nice and very normal. And sometimes that's something that I feel and that is hard to put into words. And it's something that, that even in this book, it's one thing that bugs him and makes him think about it is when he shows up to the PTA meeting, he sees the agenda laid out on the blackboard and the snacks laid out on the table and the way everybody is dressed and the way everybody is talking. And to him, it just sort of rings false or just isn't interesting. And he has to go and do this thing now anyways, despite the fact that he doesn't want to do it. And probably quite a few people in that room also don't really want to be there. But we all have to sort of put on this veneer of liking this sort of thing, even though nobody really likes it. Nobody wants to go, it's boring. No one wants to go to the PTA meeting. It's not interesting. Maybe some people do, but you know, most people don't really want to be there. Most people don't care if there's going to be an agenda on the blackboard or if there's going to be nice snacks or whatever. It's just something that we've all sort of agreed that we have to do. And I kind of enjoyed that just like the fantasy of not necessarily just doing what everybody else does and just doing the thing that he wants to do. He just goes and lives in the woods and decides he's done with, you know, doing all this niceness, so to speak. And that was something that for me was really fun to read about. Um, but just sort of towards the end of the book, kind of, I lost interest in the story. There there were a lot of other characters all of a sudden added into the story. Um, and there may have been reasons for this, which I'll kind of talk about, but I just, I started to find the book to be a bit unfunny. Like it just wasn't as funny anymore. It was getting kind of crass. Um, at one point, uh, the, the some of the new characters, they're drinking and one of them has passed out and the other two are putting toothpaste into a part of his body where there definitely should not have been toothpaste. And I found that kind of gross and I didn't understand. Like, I guess it, it was supposed to be funny. And there were parts of this book that were kind of like crafts that were funny to me before, but it just it just wasn't funny to me anymore. Closer to the end of the book. Um, I... I I feel like people maybe following Doppler into the forest in a way um, would have been a way to demonstrate how even if you do something that's sort of out of the norm or rebellious, people will see it and pick it up and also want to do it. And then it'll stop being out of the norm and rebellious and it'll sort of be normalized the way that like certain fashion can be or certain um, subcultures or whatever can be sort of co-opted in a way. and taken away and then they just become normal and they become banal and nobody cares about it anymore and you're not doing anything special by doing it anymore. Um, and I think that could have been clever, but I just felt like everything was happening so fast towards the end of the book and I didn't really understand where the story was supposed to be going and I just wasn't as interested in it by the end as I would have liked to have been. Um, during the beginning of the book, like I don't regret reading the book in any way. I did still enjoy the majority of it, but I don't think that I would necessarily read another book by this author just because I found it to be a bit crass towards the end that I didn't really think it was funny. And I feel like maybe even if I reread the first bit of it that I did initially enjoy so much, I might not even like it as much anymore because the novelty of it sort of wore off. Um, but it, it wasn't like the worst book I ever read, but I wouldn't, it, it didn't leave like the best impression on me, to be honest. Um, but uh, it did, it did present me with some interesting ideas and some like relatable, I guess, material. So that was kind of nice. And it was, 
a cute idea to have him meet a moose and befriend a moose. I love moose. You know, it's it's one of my favorite animals. I, it has to be, you know, they're adorable and they're quite large and very cool. Um, and a moose smoking a cigarette is still a hilarious idea. And I think that's the funniest thing. So, so anyways, uh, thank you so much for listening and have a great day.